hello guys so in this video we are going to see sign in sign up supply screen i have already designed logout and home screen so i will be showing you the get request and post request over here so i just restart and show you that flow of this application is first of all it will go to the supply screen show you so this is just the design of the supply screen and here you can see on the left side and once after four seconds so it will be navigating to login page that you can see over here so you can also go to sign up from here you can come back to login so i just hit login so for the time being i just uh, added a static code over here like home page login page sign up page splash and this is a common widget i have designed so that i can reuse that text field so first of all we need to add some dependencies so let's go to pubtech.yml and here we need to add dependencies so just go here under dependencies and go to your browser and search for this http dependency paste it over here this is required for api calls this is the another one which is required to maintain the storage local storage so that we can maintain the state of login the user this time it would not ask for credentials so let's go here paste it and the save it will take some time to fetch the dependencies let's close it and meanwhile it is fetching the dependencies so i have these pages over here in this folder the models i have not created any yet and the repositories folder is there. And this is a widgets folder there i have placed the commonly used widgets so you can i just uh, doing the simple example i will just add one new file here let's make it both underscore repo dot dot so i'm just keeping my logic into this repository if you want later on you can add uh, more layers like you can work with a service layer or if you want you can convert it into any mbc or mbp whatever kind of pattern you want so let's create this authentication rep class and here we need some urls from where we are going to call the apis so for api call i'm going to use this mock data that is fake apis so here first of all we need let's go with the login first so do we have any login here we have this login so go here and you can see it is showing what you need to do you need to send a request to this url so let me just open it in a new tab and then you have to pass this as a header so let me just go here and use this url over here and i just keep it here let's say static const let's say login user URL equal to this let me just write another register user url and we need home screen so we will show get users and anything else we need so i think this is fine these three urls we need the first one is done then for register user let's go here and go for register there it is go back and use this one i just copied this and go back here for register List it and for getting the list of users let's go back here and list of users just let's use this one go here you can just specify page one as well okay, let's use this url and go here and for getting the list okay so urls are ready now what we need we need 
on constructor so let's do it okay so here we have to do what we have to use shared preferences as well so that we can maintain the state of the user that the user is logged in let's do it static uh late we will initialize it later on shared preferences and let's keep it preps and here we can initialize that so let's create a, another function let's say underscore it shared preferences and we just create it over here underscore sp and here what we are going to do we are going to say press is equal to and we have to make it think and awake so let's use think and await for shared preferences dot get so this gonna initialize your shared preferences fine now next we need what next uh let's do create some functions over here let's say the first one we are going to say register a user so let's create a function register user and this register user will take some arguments let's make it uh, the named arguments so that we can identify easily required string email let me cross check first so what it is expecting for login for login it is asking for just go here it is asking for your email and password two things we need okay let's go back we need email and let's make it this required password these two things we need to take input and once we got this you have to just use let's use try catch for exception handling as well here we can say let's say return e dot that and here here we need to write a bit so we need to make it a sync as well let's make it Sync and await. So we need to use HTTP. So for that, we need to import this HTTP line. I'll just show you. Just go here, scroll down, and you can either copy any of these line. Let's say I use this one. So they have mentioned the example how you can use. Let's go back here and first of all import this. And now you can use HTTP dot. First of all, here we have to do what? Just for register user. So we have to use which request? Just go here and cross it. For register user, we have post request. Okay. So we have to call this method post. And here you need to specify the URL. For register URL, we have this already created URL. You cannot directly pass it just use this uri dot pass and here you can pass your url that is this one the second argument you need to pass that would be the body pass and the body would be this two things that is you can just close check it from here for register we have to pass two things like this just copy it go back here and can just paste it over here and remove this is extra let's cross check yep so here we have to use email and the email is coming from email field and the password is coming from password so that's it and for registration that is done and we have to check for the response as well so this gonna give us future of response time 
let's create one response type of variable and use this so HTTP response and just cross check it this response is taken from so make sure this response is taken from this HTTP response okay. this. so this response variable we need to cross check how do you check we will check if this response dot status code so it's gonna give you some integer value that integer value we have to cross check that is 200 if the status code is 200 that means it is okay if it is okay that means what you can simply return something like return you can say success whatever you want you can just return it and let's all over here otherwise there must be some error otherwise there must be some error so then you can simply return the error you will be getting like let me just close check it So error would be coming like this. So we can just go for here and simply say return. You can either return any type of response. Let's say this uh, response dot body. Let's keep it simple. Then later on we can just cross check and we can retrieve the desired value so if it is fine then success otherwise it will return something else that might be error so if you exactly want to take this error you have to convert this body part into you can say just let me just do it for you so let's say we can simply return this like return json dot the code and you can pass this like this and from here we have to get that error like this so you can experiment it whatever kind of error you want to represent so accordingly you can reformat it okay so with this we have done with this register user same way i just need one more function that would be for login user let's write here login user and same way we need these two arguments over here here we need to change this url to login url and here again we need to cross check and once it is done instead of returning success what you can do you can just uh, first of all complete this one so here if you're returning something you have to use here future okay so we are returning a sort of string so let's use future of string type same way here you have to return let's keep it simple future of bool type and we will do what we will return true if it is done otherwise we will return false. So simple now apart from doing this we have to save this information we have to save something into this local storage so that each time it will not ask for login what we can do we can just go on the top and here we are gonna create one variable let's say static and uh, let's make it const and this log in okay. so what we can do we can just keep it a key so i just make this one is a key so that each time i have to use i will just use it from here instead of 
manually writing the name so we may commit mistake so i just create one variable we will use it so that's fine and now go back over here we need to check here once this register is successful or login is successful we gonna get back what some token okay so we'll just go here and you can simply use this line to retrieve your data like here and this is token based data over here this gonna give you the token back and that token let's keep it like this final token is equal to this this token you can save it into get purpose so how do you do so preps dot set boot and the key we will be using this one that we have written so that we will not commit any mistake in typing and the value is true because it's successful okay and once it is done you can simply return true so this token you have to save in share preference as well so prep dot set string the key again we have to specify here the key copy this and we will make it although we will not be using this token let's define it but whenever you work with the big projects you have to keep your token so that's why i am just adding one more line over here so that you can see how the token is being saved so here this would be token and this would be the token so what we can do this token let me just rename this I just make it user token so that we should not face any problem understanding the things so here we have to specify the name of this token that is the key of this token that is token okay this token is the actual value coming from the response and this is the name string that is token Okay, you can also make it use a token if you want that is your choice so make sure you use it from here whenever you will use otherwise you may have spelling mismatch so let's come back here and once it is done and fine so this gonna save this value and let's create one more function over here to know whether the user is already logged in or not okay so that gonna give you future of pool type and we will check here is user logged in and make it in and here we can check for the value prep dot set pool that is is we have this variable over here is logged in if user is logged in let's use like this so if it is false you can simply check like this if this gonna give you this gonna give you what so this is a null level expression so expression so what we can do just use this question mark over here you can just check and give it a default value so if this will give you null this is gonna give you false okay if this get pool don't contain any value it will give you null that means user is not logged in okay if it is such case you can simply return false okay so this if will check whether the user is logged in or not if it is yes then it should return true that means the user is logged in otherwise it should return false okay i hope there is no problem in this logic so this gonna check the value from logged in user if the value is 
yes logged in then it will return true otherwise it will return false second scenario if there is no value associated with this logged in variable this is gonna give you null and this null check will give you default value false so that means it will not work and else will be. okay so we will use it once we will just reopen the app again and again and we left with something yes we left with one more function that is future of tool type that gonna do what log out the view and that's not the same so here what we need to do once user is logged out what we need to do we just need to do simple thing. that is await for this preference dot clear so clear everything and simply return the value true that shared preferences has been cleared that's fine save this so this is done with the repo part now what we can do let's go directly to this login page and we will try to use this code over here in this just go to here and this is the static code i have added so far okay so first of all let's go over here on the top and and they have given some default values i just do what for login i can use these default values so that i should not fill again and again every time for testing it will save my time the password is this so we will try to change it okay that's fine now what we need here we need one more variable that is authentication repository repo that is both repo is equal to application repo. okay so with this we can just call some functions so let's go here and here here what we need to do here we need to check for that uh, let me just remove this and simply we need to check for what both repo dot login user and you have to pause this email and password over here and since it is of future type let's use await here and if we are using await market sync and this part is because we are using it inside this async and here you have to check if it is mounted and do this navigation part so whenever you are using navigator inside the async context so make sure just check for this mounted if it is mounted you can simply do so so let's save this and just restart the app okay so we have to this stop this app and just rerun it because we have added that it prefers dependency so okay so app is started so let's check with this default username and password and see what we are getting so we got this success and we just sign out and let me change this password to something else okay and then let's try to log in again so again it is working so what we are doing here let's go here on this login page so we just go here and simply print here or let's say we say done here and check if everything works fine save it 
and just go back here and just specify any other name and just log in so you can see it is giving you invalid credentials and try with something else and log in you can see it is saying invalid credentials okay if i just go ahead with correct username and password you say login. okay so let's remove this this is how api call will work with a get and same way we just go for here for if i log out nothing will happen so if i log in i just come here so suppose i'm logged in i just close the app and i just open the app again that is this sign -in. you can see what it is doing will simply go to login so i have already logged in i don't want to log in again and again so what should i do now i just go to their supply screen and here where i was spending four seconds of waiting time i will check here if user is already logged in so how do you do so so simply we have to use here again that auth repo so since we are creating one instance over here we can't use this cons here and you have to remove that cons from here as well save this go here and here this repository is already having one method what we could do if this auth repo dot is user logged in so we will check with this method since it is in turning a future so let's wait for this and i just this a here so if it is giving you true simply do what navigate to this login page otherwise sorry so it should navigate to home page if it is successful so let's use home page otherwise it will go to login okay so if it is logged in we should not go for login again we should directly go to home page and if it is not logged in then it should go to login so let's save this first and just check it here it is giving some suggestions simply uh using let's make it final as well because we are creating the instance over here okay so i just run it again so meanwhile it is running we can do what we can just write the code for that home page here and we have added a button icon for log so on the press of logout what we are doing here again we need to use that repo so let me just do one and okay and this should be removed and this go to this and this go here in the slash and so since we have already logged in earlier so it is already showing you over there i just restart okay so what we left let me just complete this one here so here inside this button press we are currently going to the login page but here we want to go ahead with that so let's create a variable final is log out equal to update for authentication okay so you will not be getting that both wrap over here first of all let's make testing and we can just take it into 
uh, let's drop it over here or we can just undo this keep it constant and we just cut it from here we need it over here here okay so that we can actually use it over here here we have to check for file is log out sorry to this let's use it here and mark it as sync and we will check here sorry we have to log out here so let's log out and whatever response is coming we are keeping it over so here again we have to check here check for if it is logo that is success then you have to do what you have to navigate to this login page and since we are working inside this async so you have to use that the mounted as well and mounted. okay that's all here and uh, we have removed that uh, cons over here so let's add it and go here and just add okay so save this now whenever i will log out it will go back to this login login and it will go to this now if i close this app i just need to rerun it otherwise it will execute the already installed build so let's wait for this okay so now after the splash it would check if user is already logged in it will not ask as you can see i just close the app and run it again and it will not ask for login since i have already logged okay but if i log out in and i just close the app and run it again then it will ask for login okay now we left with just this sign up part let's simply run this app and we just go to sign up and write our code okay so let's go here and for sign up we have register and here we have to pass these two things that's fine so we will get the response back that's fine so what we need to pass again we need to pass these two things i just copy it otherwise i need to type it again and again so just replace it go here now apart from this we need that application repository over here okay so with this authentication repo what i need to do just scroll here look for that register okay here it is so this would be okay, i just go for the screen sign up we have this sign up button for sign up this button is here okay so here after this we have to use that let's say this repository dot register user where i need to pass email and password we already get the email so we already have the controllers over here on the top here it is so we have email controller and password control let's go back here email controller dot same way password controller dot text 
so once we pass this this is gonna give us what one string back that's right result equal to this and we can check here if that result is equal to is equal to let me just check it success that means it is registered successful okay so we can just cut this part and take it over here and yeah what it is saying okay so this gonna give you future so let's just wait for this and this is why we are putting it into set state uh we should not put it over here i just do what just cut this set state and finish it over here once loading is true after that we're gonna check for this register process it is success then we will say at the message loading to false otherwise we're gonna do what we're gonna set the message what so we already have this we need to set the error okay so we already using some variables over here let me see so error is error okay so we just go here and else is error is equal to true error is true and the result you can test whatever is and once everything is done and loading you need to set the false over here and then you can set the that's all just save this i just restart it okay. let's go to sign up and check for something wrong okay I just change this email to something else. This password to something else. Let's try with the sign up. And it is saying not only defined users succeed registration. That means this is the error we were getting here. And here this is the post method. That's fine. And you can print the response. That's going to give you better clarity. What this API is going to give us? Because we are using some mock. So I don't know what they may return us. Let's check here. Okay. Let us go to sign up and let's try to define any test. Let's change the email and clear this log sign up and you can see instance of response so instead of response we have to say response dot body so that we can see the actual message again and we are getting this response okay so whatever response we are getting so i just printing it as it is okay so in case uh, we are using the correct username and password and you can see what it is giving us registered successfully go ahead and load so we are getting a token back so let's remove this print and save this and just go to that sign up page and we just go here and we'll check for this message so its color should be green if message is not empty then we are just printing this message and if it is error then color should be red otherwise it should be green did i miss something i just restart it 
before sign up and just sign up. You can see now it is working fine. We have seen how to use get API code. We have seen how to use post API code. And further, we have to go for this home page as well. So here, what we were doing, we are just using any anything, not yet. So we are just displaying this. So if you want, you can use this function over here. That is. We have not created any function for this. If you want, you can create it over here and display the list of users inside that. So how do you do so? So what we can do here, first of all, let's go here and look for the response. This is a response and we can just create a model out of this. So we have this quick type dot i. So here we can just quickly create a model of any language. Just go here, paste it, and I just say users model and change the language to dot and find make all properties required. And if you want to copy this code and go back. And under the model, we can just create a file. Just paste it. Okay. Save it. Just go back here. And let's create one function of future. Of users. And this is gonna give you what? Let me just use this try and catch over here. And we have to return here. We don't need anything, just we need to use the URL that is this get users. So let's go here, get users. Let's close this and we don't need any body. If we are getting this 200, we don't need this. We can simply return this and we can simply return here. And here we have to return that go here and in this user models there would be some method. So users model we need to do what we need to get the model. You can see this one gonna give you what it's gonna give you one model back. Okay, so here you need to pass the string, the string would be your response dot. Okay, and that's fine. Otherwise, otherwise, if you want, we don't need to add any condition over here. Just gonna throw the exception directly. Okay, so just skip this. What we can do? We can simply return that empty user model if you want. So I just create a Order. and here you have to define all these things so pages let's give it a zero page we just give it zero zero you can use another way as well going with this and here we have this empty data and for sport is required so we can just cross check what is the sport over here is again taking one empty let's define support here 
have to pass these two things that is url we don't have and the text we don't have so there are different ways to handle this response so i'm not uh, directly handling it because this is gonna give us this kind of data so for the time being i'm handling it like this and if you want to go through the other methods of handling the response error you can check out my other videos so let's do what what it is saying so it may return null same thing you have to do what we don't need to try catch over here if you want but we can just uh, use it instead of using we can simply say else remove this right remove this and on home page we have to use that list view builder and here you have to use item builder that is taking this context and index that gonna give you that and we need to pass that is item count how do you get item count so we have to create something over here let's create first of all copy this and on press what we are doing we are doing log out and here once in it done dot get all users so once you got all the users you have to assign it into some variable let's do what yes. i will say late or you can do what write your statement like we have done over here and just create an empty model and i will say this is equal to need to import this and write it over here okay so once it is done you can simply since it is doing what it is doing a sync call so let's say which data and this which data would be defined over here which will be a sync and we need to do what users is equal to await for this line okay so so on initialization part once this is done so this gonna call this fetch data which is going to fetch data from the this api so once you receive this data you can go here and simply see you just so how do you get the length of with we'll just cross check the response we are going here have a patient partial so we are getting the data from this data so let's say data dot length users dot data dot length and here we have to turn so let's check for the item gonna give a text simply say how do you do simply say users dot data dot and you can simply pass the index over here like this okay so we need to remove once for support since we are using dynamic data and here what we are getting so data can't be assigned so from data we have to do what from data you have to let's say print first name and last name and we do what dot first name and do what plus some space plus Users. last name and what okay so it is uh, suggesting us for using interpolation okay so let's remove this and simply use it like this
and remove this extra add and let's use another properties there subtitle that is also taking text widget and here we can simply use the email property and i think that's all and further if you want you can decorate the data as per your environment i just go here and log in then is taking some time so what we are doing so we have to use some variable over here so let's say users what we do here is and here we're gonna replace this we'll check this users dot data dot length there it is uh, we cannot do like this i just do what i go here i say is loaded once data is loaded i will just mark it true and we need to create it on the top here so i will initially make it false So we just do what here. Check for this. If it is loaded, then show this list view. Otherwise, search users. Press individual. And so let's add a const save it and check. So are we getting any response? Okay, let's do what we just go here and simply print here. We will cross it. Are we getting something back? Or we just restart and cross it. It called. You can see this data is loaded now and what is the issue we are facing for home screen once data is loaded we just close it here so, and we just remove data dot and and we can print from here and you can see it is now loaded so what is happening so once the data is loaded we can simply say set so that's what we were missing let's save this and remove print statements we are getting so we don't need this So that is all. So that is all for this video. If you have any doubt, do comment in the comment section. Otherwise, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.